Hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Get cozy, get comfortable, because we're going to talk about some books. I wanted this to be like a really cozy video. I'm in my new chair. I'm so excited to talk to you guys again because life has just been so busy. I feel like my videos haven't been super consistent and I want to change that. Let's just jump right in. I wanted to put the March wrap up and also the April TBR together in one video because I didn't think it would make sense to make it into two videos when we're already like 10 days into April. Better late than never. This is also my second time filming this video because the first time that I tried, we got interrupted by an earthquake. It was just an aftershock. It wasn't the main event. I have never experienced an earthquake before and that was so wild to me, but luckily everything's all good. Anyways, I digress. The first book that I read in March was Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney. This is kind of like a mystery thriller, it, kind of, it is a mystery thriller. And it follows our character named Daisy as she's going to her grandmother's 80th birthday on this very secluded island. And her family is very uh, difficult. To say the least, they are not likable characters. They are very odd. They are just so weird and they treat each other so badly. Like I, their characters are not likable. When they're celebrating the grandmother's 80th birthday, the grandma shows up dead. As the night goes on, one person dies at a time and they can't call for help because they're on a secluded island. So when the tide rises, no one can get out to the house. One of them is killing the entire family and you're trying to figure out who it is. I enjoyed this. I do think that it was a little bit slow paced at some moments because I didn't really care about the family members. I didn't like them. So I didn't really care about their background. Those portions were a little bit like, don't really care. Can we move on? I gave this book a 3.5. Originally going to just give it a 3 because I enjoyed it. I would recommend it if you like these kind of concepts, but the ending really, really bumped it up because the plot twist I did not see coming whatsoever. Like I said, I didn't like the characters of the family but I think the author did a really good job at making them unlikable. They were unlikable for a reason. I honestly when I finished the book I put it down and I was like whoa how did I not see that coming. The next book is Crescent City. This is the first there's something in my eye. This is the first book called House of Earth and Blood. Oh man, okay. How do I even go into telling you what this book is about? This is a behemoth of a book, almost 800 pages, literally 799. If you haven't read this book, I highly recommend going into it without reading the back of the book because I think the synopsis really gives away the big chain of events of how Bryce's life is about to take a turn. I think it gives a better effect if you didn't know it was coming. It would hit a lot harder than obviously knowing that this was coming. This is basically a mystery. It has three POVs, Bryce, Hunt, and Rune. Bryce, she's okay. She's not very likable in my opinion. Sometimes I feel like she's a little bit aggressive. I think she gets offended really easily. It was really aggressive the way she tries to make people hate her when why are you trying to make people hate you, you know? She was an A eh character. I didn't hate her, but I also didn't really love her like I usually do with Sarah J Mass's characters. And then there's Hunt, kind of in the background, in my opinion. He is, I think, the main love interest in the series, but he kind of just felt very, I wouldn't say bland. I did like his character and I did like Bryce and Hunt's relationship as friends and then more than friends, but individually, they are not super interesting characters, in my opinion. I do think Hunt has a more interesting background, and then there's Rune, also one of those characters where they just feel like a supporting character. They don't feel like a main character. I feel like we just got so much and so little of them at the same time. You kind of follow them as they're trying to figure out this mystery of what's going on in the city that they are living in. Did I mention this is Sarah's first high fantasy, high adult high adult, adult fantasy and urban fantasy. Urban fantasy, if you guys don't know, is basically modern day fantasy. You have all of these creatures like vampires, werewolves, nymphs, and mermaids, and all of these shapeshifters set in modern day where they can go clubbing, they have phones, Bryce is half fae, half human, Hunt is an angel, Rune is full fae. I gave this book a four star. I really, really, really did enjoy the story and the writing sometimes got a 
little bit confusing. I think that's just how high fantasy is sometimes. There is going to be a lot of information that you're going to have to digest and really think about it. My nose is really stuffy. My allergies are kicking in, so if I sound really nasally, that is why. I just think there are some moments that I was a little bit bored, not because the story was boring, but because I just didn't care too much. I knew when a moment was sad for the character, but I didn't actually feel sad. Like I knew they were sad and I'm like, oh, this is sad for you, bestie, but I not sad. I am going to continue with this series because I did enjoy it and I cannot not read one of Sarah's series. Next up is Heart of the Raven Prince by Tassandra Odette. This is part of a like standalone series if that makes any sense. Instead of the series following the same set of characters the entire time, this changes to different sets of characters per book. So this one is a Cinderella retelling and you follow a half fey girl named Ember. She is living with her stepmother and two evil stepsisters. She's trying to basically escape her life. She's waiting until she's not a minor where she can run off and do what she wants to do with her life instead of being trapped in a bargain with her stepmother. And then you also have Prince Franco. The two of them end up meeting at a ball, yada yada, and you know the rest is history. I really like how this author didn't take all of the cliches of Cinderella. It's not cliche for Cinderella, but it would have been a cliche if she kept it. I liked how she had her own little twist on the glass slipper or the disguise or, you know, like all of the things that we love about Cinderella was in this book, but not done exactly the same, but still there. And I really enjoyed picking those parts out and it was a lot of fun to read. If you want like a really cozy, easy fantasy read, I really highly recommend this. This is not high stakes at all. You just have two people trying to, you know, live their life and they end up coming to a compromise to help each other out in their situations. Prince Franco needs to find a wife. So he pretends to court Ember and Ember pretends to be someone to be courted at court. Wow, that is a sentence, huh? And I rated this book a 3.75. I really, really enjoyed this. I do want to read the other books. I think this sums it up really well. A playboy prince in want of a decoy bride. A servant girl desperate for a disguise. Then we have Ever Lost by Neil Schusterman. This follows two kind of preteens, early teenage kids that get in a car accident and unfortunately do not make it. They are found in Ever Lost. Ever Lost is basically purgatory for kids. Follow these two named Nick and Allie as they're trying to figure out their new afterlife. They're learning about the world of Ever Lost, all the concepts of the paranormal community and poltergeist or possessing someone is all in here. I think Neil Schusterman did a really good job at taking these topics and making them less scary and more like fun and giving reason to why these ghost things happen. I think overall it was just a fun read about ghosts, why things are the way they are. So I found that really interesting. I read this when I was in either early middle school or elementary school for the first time and I loved it. I adore how interesting the paranormal world was because I love ghost stories. I will say though, when I first read this when I was younger, I did not see or pick up on the language and how it was very much middle grade. This is a middle grade series, so if you have any younger siblings, younger relatives, or friends that you think will enjoy this, I highly recommend. It's really easy to read, there's nothing inappropriate, but definitely can tell it's mid grade. It's kind of like reading a series of unfortunate events. I rated this book a 3 star. I enjoyed it for nostalgic reasons. I don't think this fits on a 3 star level with the other books that I've read, but because it's a nostalgic series for me, I just could not give it anything lower. The Good Part by Sophie Cozens. This book I've been trying to finish for months now. I think I got this in November when I was in the airport. I wanted a lighthearted read that wasn't a fantasy book. I wanted a modern day, not even a romance, just something not fantasy. Just a quick, you know, flip through 
as I'm reading at the airport. But it took me months to finish this. It wasn't because it was bad at all. Once I got busy and put it down, I just rarely picked it up again. I still enjoyed it, but I think it didn't hit as hard because I put it down. So you follow Lucy and she's 26. She lives in New York City. She has a bunch of roommates in a cramped, not so great apartment and her job isn't going as well as she wants it to because she's still kind of in that assistant intern phase for a TV production industry. Her life isn't going as well as she wants it to go, but she's only 26, you know? She finds this like wishing machine, one of those vintage arcade games that is a wishing machine, and she wishes she skips all of this and just goes to the good part in her life. And she goes all the way to when she's like 40, and now she has a husband and two kids. She wakes up, she's like, this is not my life. Hello. Her husband is very handsome, very kind. She has two adorable kids and her job going super well. She's doing really well. And I think this book did a really, really good job at telling you to live in the moment. And when you're younger, things are going to be really stressful. You're trying to figure yourself out and get on the right path to what you want in your life. But all of that struggle makes you appreciate the good parts in your life so, so much more. To skip to the good part without having the rest of the in-between struggle you're gonna feel like I didn't deserve this I didn't work for this and it just feels very different than if you work through it and I think following Lucy as she struggles with this imposter sy syndrome was really eye-opening because we all have days where we doubt ourselves and feel like we're not doing the right thing in our life and we just kind of want this stressful thing or stressful moment in our life to just go away and I wish everything was just all smooth sailing. We all have those moments, but this really shows you, yes, life is hard, but it will make you appreciate when things go right. Like you go on these terrible dates and you meet these terrible men and they're really mundane and boring, but then you meet this one person that really connects with you and then you end up appreciating them even more. Sometimes that's what you have to go through. I gave this book a 3.25. Again, I think it would have gotten a higher rating if I didn't put it down for so long. I don't know what you would categorize this as. It's not really a romance even though she has a husband. It's not focusing on that. I'm really sorry about the lighting. It's been really cloudy but let's just move on to the last book I read in the month of March and that's Hooked by Emily McIntyre or McIntyre. <laughs> McIntyre. McIntyre. I am zero and two when it comes to Peter Pan retellings. Besties. Zero and two meaning I've read two now and I did not like either of them. This one more than never. <sighs> I'm just so sad because I was thinking that this was going into fantasy when it didn't. There's no fantasy. It's just basically taking character names and putting it into this book. There's nothing to connect this with Peter Pan at all other than the names, which was really disappointing. Maybe I just expected this to be a fantasy and I feel like that's kind of my fault. I should have done more research, but if you're gonna tell me that this is a Peter Pan retelling, I'm gonna expect it to be more fantastical than a gang. This is basically a mafia gang romance, adult romance, and I listened to the audiobook of this because I was building my Orchid Lego set and first chapter in and I was like, oh, this is one of those books. Oh, this is one of those books. This is pure smut. <laughs> pure smut, no plot. There is a plot, but the plot is very iffy. Like, I feel like people that would pick up this book wouldn't read it for plot. You get it? You get what I mean? So I was listening to this and I was like, dang, like this is all pure physical attraction. It's lust. There's no love whatsoever. Don't understand how these two characters ever fell in love. Don't get it. It was just pure physical attraction. If you guys like smut, yeah, go ahead, read this. You might enjoy it. I'm not yucking your yum. I think this is just one of those moments where I was not expecting what I was getting myself into. I was expecting a fantasy adult romance, but instead I got a darker romance. I don't even know if this would be considered dark romance, maybe. I don't really read dark romance, so don't come at me if this is not a dark romance. So you basically have James, who is Hook. His nickname is Hook. 
and he is a mafia boss basically and then you have Wendy she's this kind of innocent character that has been sheltered by her father Peter her entire life obviously James hates Peter one day Wendy meets James and they fall in love how I don't know I don't know how they fall in love but they fall in love yeah so I was listening to this audiobook innocently putting together my flower Legos as they are saying the most raunchy stuff so I ended up giving this book a two star a one star is I want to throw it in the trash can so two star is a little bit better than that I think I gave it the benefit of the doubt that I went into this not knowing what this was will I be reading the rest of the series no probably not because I feel like the writing of it was also not that great you don't really know anything much about the characters except for at the very beginning you learn about things about the characters and that's all you know about them throughout the whole story the plot was just really quickly done it was very two-dimensional okay i took a small break but now we're back and we're gonna go over the books that i want to read in april i'm reading daisy hates this is the second book in the magnolia park scene no <laughs> wrong completely wrong this is the fourth book in the magnolia parks universe but the second book for daisy hates i obviously can't tell you guys too much on what this book is about but i'm more than halfway through i am doing a annotate with me reading vlog for this book and it's just been taking me a little bit to get through it um it's not the book's fault i think it's just me i'm kind of in a slight reading slump still but yeah this is the first book on my April TBR. After that, obviously, it is Magnolia Parks Into the Dark. I'm so, so excited for this. This is one of my most anticipated books of 2024. A wrapped up story for BJ and Magnolia because they deserve the best and they deserve a happy ending. So I really, really hope that they get their happy ending in this. This is their third book. This is all going to come back and conclude beautifully just because I know Jessa is going to do what's right for these characters, even if it's not something we want as readers this is a hefty book i'm trying not to spoil anything but it's in the like almost 700 if not 700 pages range but i'm so excited for every single page of this thing i know i'm gonna cry speaking of crying i also added if only i had told her this is the second book and kind of like a companion novel with if he had been with me and that book was a ride to read i enjoyed it i really liked the writing of it it was very moody it had a vibe to it that I really like for like fall season. So I was excited because this is following Finn's point of view. If you've read the first book, you understand why this is one of the most sought after books. I'm a little bit hesitant because I've heard reviews and they're not great. I'm gonna go into this obviously with an open mind and if I enjoy it, I enjoy it. I'm not gonna let other people's reviews sample my fun, but I'm just a little hesitant. I'm trying to like wind it down a little bit and not expect too much from this book and just let myself like it or dislike it. But if you guys don't know what this duology is about, it just follows Finn and Autumn, childhood best friends. They just go through life, Growing up basically and growing apart and just how life goes when you go from elementary school to high school Sometimes you just grow apart from your friends. Their moms are best friends So they kind of still see each other throughout their lives, but they're very different in their social circles all of autumn's pov you kind of see her point of view on how the friendship grew apart and why it grew apart on her side but i just want to know finn's side so badly but again i'm gonna try to keep myself level-headed while reading this on the lighter side of things i also added assistant to the villain if you can't tell i'm already in the middle of this book it is april 10th while i'm filming this we're a week into the month and this is kind of like a, a very cozy fantasy but not cozy in the sense that like oh it's so cute and blah 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 it is really cute but like the title says it's being the assistant to a villain if you just imagine a childhood storybook that setting of small village and there are monsters in the woods and there's an evil villain in a castle in the woods imagine that setting like that cute little cozy setting put your main character as the assistant of the villain with ailing family to support evie sage's employment status isn't just important it's vital so when a mishap with renadon's most infamous villain results in a job offer naturally she's says yes. 
No job is perfect, of course, but even less so when you develop a teeny crush on your terrifying, temperamental, and undeniably hot boss. Don't find evil so attractive, Evie. But just when she's getting used to severed heads suspended from the ceiling and the odd squish of an errant eyeball beneath her heel, Evie suspects this dungeon has a huge rat, and not just the literal kind, because something rotten is growing in the kingdom of Renadon, and someone wants to take the villain and his entire nefarious and Empire out. Now Evie must not only resist drooling over her boss, but also figure out exactly who is sabotaging his work and ensure he makes them pay. After all, a good job is hard to find. Next, I also included Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. I wanted to add like a romance into this because the other books are either like heavy hitters or fantasies, so I wanted to add a little fun, easy, quick romance read. And this has been on my radar for a really long time. I've had this book for a minute literally have never seen a bad review on this book so and also Emily Henry has a blurb on the back that says Jimenez is a true talent come on if Emily Henry has that review on you girl let's be for real I'm gonna read this book so I don't know exactly what this book is about but I think it's just about two people sending emails or letters to each other because yours truly is kind of a sign off for emails oh it says here they're exchanging letters they fall in love while exchanging letters and I think that's such a cute concept. I'm more of a emotional person when it comes to reading romances. If the couple is too lusty at the very beginning of their like friendship or relationship whatever you want to call it, it kind of turns me off on the relationship because it feels like they're not emotionally connected and it just doesn't feel like they're going to last, you know? Like, the, no hate on those books. Zero hate on those books, but that's just my preference. I just don't feel connected with that kind of romance. So I think this is gonna be really cute, just the fact that they're sending letters to each other and they fall in love. That's adorable. Okay, so the next book is a little bit more serious, a little bit more brain power needed, and that's Golden Sun by Pierce Brown. This is the second book in the Red Rising series. I love Red Rising. It was so interesting. Entertaining. It was so fast-paced. Literally nothing I expected from the book, but everything that I needed, apparently. I ended up giving Red Rising a five stars, so I wanted to pick this up, but I also didn't want to go into this one immediately after that book because that one, it was a lot. Like when I tell you it's fast paced and it's jam packed with stuff, there's not a moment in that book where you're like, okay, I'm bored. I just needed some time to wind down a little bit to come back up. Sometimes you just want to read a silly goofy book and not about politics. And this is a lot of politics. I'm also in the middle of this book, but I'm not that far in. I'm like 60 pages in. I'm enjoying it. I can't tell you what this one's about, but just know that this is a sci-fi book. It's basically war in space. Don't think of Star Wars, but I'm really excited for this one also. So to kind of backtrack a little bit, when I was saying I'm scared of reading my most anticipated books of 2024, I also included Ruthless Vows by Rebecca Ross on April's TBR. I want to read this, I want to get it over with, not in the way that I'm dreading reading this, but also in the way that I'm dreading reading this. Just because, again, I've seen reviews and they're disappointing reviews, so I'm kind of scared that I'm not gonna like it. I did enjoy Divine Rivals. I don't think I like loved it as much as the rest of the community did, but I did really enjoy it. I liked how emotional it was and how it didn't focus so much on saving the world or earth-shattering romance like it wasn't that it was very much what people go through in war and also falling in love during a time of war. It was so beautifully done. I really liked Divine Rival, so I'm really nervous on seeing how this goes. The last book I have on my TBR for April is Crescent City 2, which is House of Sky and Breath. The dust jacket's on my bookshelf. Too lazy to put it on the book right now, but I am in the middle of this one also. I recently just posted a video of a reading vlog for the first Crescent City book. I hope you guys enjoy that video. If you haven't watched it, go check it out. There is a spoiler version and also a spoiler free version. I'm gonna do the same thing for this book. I'm gonna make two videos for you guys to watch. This book is so big. The first one was already big. I don't want to open to the last page of this to check the page number because knowing me, my eyes are gonna glance up to the last word or last sentence and I just, I know I'm gonna spoil it for myself. So I'm not gonna do that, but it's thick. Like if you hit someone over the head with this, 
they're out. I like the first one. It was kind of like a mystery vibe going on with it. This one, I doubt it's going to be mystery. I'm sorry if you guys can hear that. My like AC just turned on and it's really loud. Other than that, I'm excited to see where this goes, but I'm also really hoping there aren't any boring parts because this is a lot. This is a lot.